Hey everyone, welcome to the penultimate, the second to last video of Theme 2 GCSE Geography. What we're going to be looking at today is the decline and regeneration of a city in an HIC. We're going to use Cardiff as an example. So what we're going to look at is the rise and fall of the coal industry, of the heavy industry across South Wales, how the decline in that heavy industry has impacted upon the cities in South Wales, including Cardiff, and how those cities, after experiencing huge job losses when the industry shut down, how those cities have tried to recover. So, <laughs> sorry, um, one of my colleagues is making ridiculous faces at me through the window in my door. I'm recording in school. Um, I'm not going to start again. We're just going to brush past it. What was I saying? Um, yeah, how those cities then have put in place regeneration plans to recover from this um, de-industrialisation and high levels of unemployment. So if you pause the video here a moment, go ahead please and write down the title and we'll get started. Okay, so first up, let's look at a little bit of history. Why did Cardiff grow so rapidly as a successful city in the first place? So if we go back to sort of like mid-1700s through the 1800s into the early 1900s really, the 1700s and 1800s when the Industrial Revolution was at its peak, South Wales was benefiting from this massively. Swansea had the largest copper industry in the whole, in the whole world. Um, Cardiff as well, the docks in Cardiff were importing and exporting, exporting mostly lots of heavy industry, steel, copper, iron ore, limestone. Primarily though, most of the industry across South Wales was running off the back of the coal industry. South Wales is very famous, well the whole of Wales really is famous for our high quality coal called anthracite coal. It burns at very very high temperatures which means it produces a lot of energy so we were using it to power our industry through the industrial revolution. We were exporting it to other parts of the world as well and charging a premium for it and this meant that our economy was growing really rapidly. Um, the industrialization, the growth of the factories created loads and loads of jobs. So people moved to Cardiff from all over the world, not just from all over Britain. We had people coming from Western Europe, from as far afield as Jamaica and other British colonies um, around and after World War II. So this created then a growing city. People are moving in in search of jobs. When you've got more people, you need more houses. So we started building rows and rows of terraced houses, back to back rows of terraced houses that form what is now the inner city area of Cardiff. And the people living here, sure, it was pretty overcrowded, but the community spirit was really, really strong. Everyone knew each other, everyone looked out for each other. So we've got a tight knit community, a growing economy, growing jobs, growing income, a really successful, rapidly growing city. City. However, as we know, coal industry in Wales declined around about the late 1990s in particular, from when Margaret Thatcher came into power onwards, very controversial, lots of mine closures and miners strikes and things like that. What you've got here is a graph that shows the rise and fall of coal production in South Wales over time. So the red line is the coal that we were producing. And the black line is when our coal reached a significantly low level, it actually meant that we had to start buying coal from other countries to try and keep our industry going because it was employing so many people and making so much money. So what I'd like you to do, on the handout that goes with this lesson, you've got a copy of this graph and you've also got a copy of several text boxes that annotate the graph. That means they explain the pattern shown by the red and the black line. I would like you to cut and stick this graph in the middle of about half a page worth of space and then cut and stick the annotations around the outside of the graph with an arrow pointing to the part of the graph that that annotation explains. Now if you don't have a printer leave a, a space in the middle of half a page and write down the annotations instead and when we come back we can always add the arrows on together. So pause the video here a moment if you can cut and stick or cut and stick and write some sort of combination to create what's called a living graph. A graph with annotations around it pointing to parts of the graph to explain what is happening in the graph. Okay so pause the video here a minute go ahead and try that please. Okay, so what you should now be looking at is a graph that looks something like this. So coal production in Wales was on the increase through kind of the 
um, 1800s here. We're producing lots of coal, high quality anthracite coal, and it's being exported to the rest of the world through the docks in cities like Cardiff. Coal production reaches its peak, producing and providing thousands of different jobs um, in the Cardiff dock area, lots of employment opportunities, so lots of people are moving into Cardiff. The coal deposits in South Wales then, though, start to become less productive. The coal that was left was not economically viable to extract. That means that it's either too deep to get to or it's too dangerous to get to. The amount of money it would cost to actually get that coal out of the ground, you wouldn't make your money back. It's not economically viable. So coal production in South Wales started to decline quite rapidly from sort of the 1960s, 1970s onwards. And what this meant was eventually the coal deposits in Wales became so unproductive that the deep mines closed and we had to start importing coal to try and keep our industry going. And this decline of coal here means such high levels of unemployment that miners lose their jobs, dock workers lose their jobs, and then because those workers don't have any money anymore, they're not spending it in local businesses and local shops. So those businesses in Cardiff start to close down around the dock area as well. Any local shops, hairdressers, supermarket, well, I'm saying supermarkets, but oh no, we are kind of 1990s, 2000s, that all starts to close down. And that means even more job losses and people had even less disposable income. So what we're going to look at now is, well, how did this part of the graph affect Cardiff? So all industrial cities across Britain, not just Wales, experienced this kind of decline. The London Docklands area in London in the 1970s was known as the Isle of Dogs. It was so run down and derelict. The docks area in Swansea as well. Ours looked like this too. The dock area in Cardiff, Manchester, Liverpool, all of these industrial cities ended up looking like this because the factories shut down, which meant there was nothing to export out of the docks, so the docks shut down and it just all became really boarded up and derelict. There was leftover machinery everywhere, the waterways were really polluted, there was debris, there was um, asbestos and other chemicals and toxins in the area that it wasn't good for the environment, it wasn't socially um, good for the area either, visual pollution and stigma, negative image attached to the area. And economically as well, we've got really high levels of unemployment. So around about the 1980s, the Cardiff City Council decided we've got to do something about this. We can't leave our Cardiff Bay, Cardiff Dockland area looking like this. What are we going to do? So they formed a group called the CBDC, the Cardiff Bay Development Corporation. It was set up in 1987, which will seem like an absolute age ago <laughs> to most of you watching this video. It was only one year after I was born though. So we're looking at about 35 years ago. They set this group up and the plan was to regenerate over a thousand hectares of southern Cardiff. This actually accounts for 20% of the city. So they were going to focus on the area of the docks themselves, but also the surrounding areas of the inner city where the terraced houses were, where the ex-dock worker generations were living. It was aimed at helping the most deprived areas of Cardiff, like Butte Town and its 5,000 residents and the surrounding areas that were experiencing high levels of unemployment. The aim was to create over five and a half thousand square metres of office space that hopefully would attract businesses back to the area and offices attracts business and business means jobs and jobs means money. They also wanted to create 6,000 new homes and the idea was that these were going to be quite high-end professional level apartments that were going to be super attractive and modern to pull in your higher earning, higher qualified demographic of young professionals and young professional families. They were going to put tourist, leisure and retail facilities in as well. So things that we now know are there, like the Millennium Centre with lots of performances, the Senate with the Welsh Assembly Government buildings, all those restaurants and bars and pubs and clubs all around the Cardiff Bay area to bring tourists and visitors into the area, spending money, boosting the economy. They were also going to build a barrage. Now, a barrage is like, um, what's the, like a barrier. And what it does is... The Cardiff Bay area, actually, when it's at low tide, the Cardiff Bay it has a wetland habitat there. It's not permanently full of water. And a wetland habitat is great for birds, it's great for wildlife, it's great for vegetation. So at low tide, there was a wetland habitat there. And then at high tide, the water came all the way in. What the CBDC wanted to do was 
keep the bay permanently full of water. The idea being that some of the high-end professionals that were going to move into these new homes, they might have um, some leisure boats and small yachts and things like that, that they could create jetties and create like a dock area for them to put their boats in. They could also do water sports and things in the area then as well to attract even more people. So they built a barrage to control the tide. So it doesn't go all the way out anymore to reveal the wetland habitat. The bay is permanently full of water so people can store their boats. And it, and it looks nicer. Wetlands are muddy, grassy, shrubby areas. So that's what the barrage was for, to control the tide, to keep the bay full of water so people could store their boats there. In the handout, you've got, ah, oh, the aim was for it to be completed by 2010, which it more or less was. In the handout, you've got several statements about the CBDC regeneration. I'd like you to choose any four colours. I've gone for yellow if it's good for people, blue if it's good for jobs and the economy, and green if it's good for the environment, and red if it doesn't bring any benefit at all, or it's bad for people, bad for the economy, or bad for the environment. I'd like you to um, read the statements and colour code each one. Now you may decide that some statement, <laughs> you may decide to colour some statement box E, half and half. <laughs> Clearly that E shouldn't be there, apologies. You may decide that some statements might be more than one colour, absolutely fine. Okay, it depends on to what level of depth you're thinking about this. But what you're essentially doing is you are evaluating. You're looking to see whether this project was sustainable, socially, economically, environmentally, or not at all. So go to the handout, print it out, colour code it. If you don't have a printer, I'm afraid you're going to have to go about this the hard way. Maybe create um, four spider diagrams or a table with four columns or some kind of system like that and categorise them by writing them into different columns. Or you could copy the statements out into your book and then highlight over the top of the statements in a certain colour. Your choice. But one way or another, I'd like you to use some sort of colour coding system to evaluate the sustainability of the CBDC project. So go ahead and do that now, please. Okay, and that brings us to the end of lesson 13. Short and sweet today. So what we've looked at here is the rise and fall and regeneration of a global city in an HIC. We've used Cardiff. What we're going to look at as the last part of theme two is the rise and fall and regeneration of an LIC slash NIC city. We're going to use Mumbai in India and that leads us into looking at slums and how they can regenerate and solve some of the issues associated with informal settlements like slums. So as usual if you've got any questions drop me an email otherwise I'll see you soon for lesson 14. Well done.